All right, since we're solving all these square root equations, we need to consider the possibility that we might end up with something called an extraneous solution. Uh, what is an extraneous solution? It's one that when you work through and you get all the way to the end, it looks like you completely got the right answer. But if you go back and check it, you find out that it doesn't work in the original equation. Uh, this happens because we square things as a means to solve. So for example, let's look at 3x equals the square root of 5x plus 4. All right, uh, simple enough. If you're caught up especially, you know to cancel that square root, we're going to square that side, square this side. And when I do that, be careful, 3x times 3x, 9x squared now equals the square, cancels out the square root, 5x plus 4. This is the first time, though, that we've ended up with an x squared we have to deal with. Well, remember, way back to when we were doing quadratic equations, I need this equal to 0 before I can do anything. To make that happen, I'm going to move the 5x and the 4 to the other side, and I get 9x squared minus 5x minus 4 equal to 0. Now we're going to hope it's factorable, because I really don't want to mess with the quadratic formula. Don't have my calculator handy to be able to graph it and see where those cross. So we're going to multiply a times c, 9 times 4, negative 4, sorry, is negative 36. And I need the factors that multiply to negative 36. And when I add them together, it's going to equal negative 5. Turns out what I'm looking for is negative 9 and positive 4. 9 times 4 is 36, negative 9 times positive 4 is negative 36, negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. I got this 36 by multiplying by 9, so I'm going to have to divide that 9 back out, which means my factors are x minus 1, 9 over 9, times x plus 4 ninths. Now, I could rearrange that and make that 9x plus 4, but because I'm looking for solutions, I don't need to do that. Remember, we can stop here and pull those values straight out so that I get x equals negative 1 and negative, sorry, positive 1 and negative 4 ninths. It looks like we're finished, right? It's real tempting to just check it off and move on to the next one. But because I've got two answer choices, I need to go back and make sure they both work, just like we talked about last time. Thinking through and double checking, making sure that if I plug it back in, it's gonna make sense, right? Not only to the radical, but to the equation as a whole. I need to make sure that when I plug my answers back in, both sides are still equal. So let's think through it. Plug in my positive 1. So 3 times 1 equals the square root of 5 times 1 plus 4. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9. The square root of 9 equals 3. Is that a reasonable and true statement? Yes it is. My positive 1 is okay. So let's check the negative 4 ninths. If I plug negative 4 ninths in, okay, if I'm not comfortable with fractions, I'm going to have to get my calculator out, figure out if this is even a positive number. But 3 that's positive times negative 4 ninths means this answer over here is negative equal to the square root of something. And as we figured out the other day, this is not okay. I can't take the square root and assume that the answer is going to be negative, which tells me this negative 4 ninths is not an option. So the only solution we have is when x is equal to that positive 1. Okay, one more example. Let's try now x plus 5 raised to the 1 half equal to x minus 1. 
Remember that raised to the one half means the same thing as taking the square root. And either way, we're going to square both sides to clear the exponent or the radical either way. Square both sides. And now we're looking at x plus 5 is equal to, be careful here, this is not x squared minus 1. I have to multiply x minus 1 times itself and get x squared minus x minus x plus 1. Simplify. x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to x plus 5. <clears throat> We're working with a quadratic, so we still need to get it equal to zero so that hopefully we have something that's factorable. When I subtract these, I end up with zero equal to x squared. Remember there's a one here, so minus three x. Positive one minus five leaves me at negative four. Going to try to factor, so what numbers multiply to equal negative 4 and still add together to equal negative 3? Negative 4 and positive 1. Negative times positive is negative. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 4 plus 1 equals negative 3. Drop those in. x minus 4 times x plus 1 which tells me my possible answer choices are x is equal to positive 4 or negative 1. So we're going to take those back. It's not quite as obvious this time. I don't just have the x sitting by itself. So we're going to use those and substitution to see which one or maybe both of them work. So I've got the square root of my number plus 5 equal to my number minus 1. So let's start with the positive 4. The square root of 4 plus 5, does that equal 4 minus 1? 4 minus 1 is 3. The square root, we've got 9 again. Square root of 9 equals positive 3. It's both reasonable and true, so it's OK. Now let's check our negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5, is that equal to negative 1 minus 1? Here I've got the square root of 4, okay to work with, but negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. I've ended up with the square root equal to a negative answer, which is not okay. I can't use the negative 1. My only solution x equals positive 4.